America, our citizens are confronted by yet another danger, one firmly within our control. The steady creep of government bureaucracy that drains the vitality and wealth of the people. The West became great, not because of paperwork and regulations, but because people were allowed to chase their dreams and pursue their destinies. President Trump slamming, stifling, and counterproductive big government, arguing that it is a danger impediment on the individualistic culture of the Western world, which has allowed it to thrive for decades. So, will big government or individualism lead, individualism rather, lead the Western world into the future? We're going to let the experts help us out here. DeRoy Murdoch is back along with Chip Roy. Chip, um, you know, this is always uh, such a telling story after the last eight years where an avalanche of big government not only seized and, 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 and stopped the wheels of commerce from moving, but for many, it, it, it cost a lost hope in capitalism and lost hope in, in the ability to prosper in this country. Well, Charles, thanks for having me on. I, I was glad to see the president address this important issue. You know, when I went to Washington for the first time to work on Capitol Hill in 2003, the Code of Federal Regulations was about 80-something thousand pages. Today, it's over 114,000 pages. And in those pages lies the death of our economy if we allow it to continue to grow. And if you think about it, what's been the result? In the 21st century, which we're almost 20% through, we've only had over 3% economic growth twice in that time. But you remember, when I grew up in the 80s or in the Reagan years, we had over 4%, even 7% economic growth. Even in the 90s under President Clinton, we had growth that was over 4%. We're allowing regulations to strangle the, the hallmark of the American economy, and that's the growth of, of uh, uh, entrepreneurs in the, in the business climate. And uh, we need to do something about it. The president's exactly right. You know, DeRoy, um, uh, Ronald Reagan had 159 what they call significant regulations. These are regulations that impact negatively the economy by 100 million. President uh, Obama had 488 of them. Wow. I mean, so, I mean, they tripled uh, at their annual rate. It's so. Uh, you know, obviously it has had a, a devastating impact on our culture, and yet just with health care, we see once you start to and put this stuff into play, whether it's in a new entitlement or whatever, it's hard to get rid of it. It can be hard to get rid of these things, and to me what's most striking about this is not just the big picture items like Obamacare and Dodd-Frank, these really huge regulations, but the level of incredible micromanagement in which uh, Obama and Washington, D.C. Uh, were involved. For example, we had regulations on ceiling fans, dishwashers, uh, the actual font on local street signs across the country. And my favorite is uh, federal regulation of commercial ice making machines. There's an actual regulation where you have, if you produce commercial ice, you're supposed to uh, create some ice, test it, and determine whether it is harder than, softer than, or equal to the federal ice hardness factor. And if you look that up, the, the formula for it looks like something. Is that the same aisle that decided how many uh, licks to the center of a lollipop? Who, I mean, so, who, something who, like that. Who actually does that? It's Chip, incredible. It's crazy uh, stuff. You know, even beyond the, the torturous nature of these when it comes to the economy, there's something else about a paternalistic uh, big government that, you know, obviously it needs high taxes to, to keep feeding on that beast, but it also does something to us. It pushes us back. It pushes back entrepreneurship. It pushes back individualism. It pushes back the core of why we propelled to the front of the pack in the first place. No, you know, that's exactly right, Charles. And, and, you know, when you think about the big strangle in the economy of late, it's Obamacare. And that's obviously front and center with what the Senate's focused on this uh, recess break. But you can't overlook the impact on the economy of Obamacare and what it's doing to strangle jobs and job creation over the last eight or nine years. We will not get to the kind of 3% and 4% and 5% economic growth that this country's capable of if we don't release that burden on small businesses and uh, free up entrepreneurs who come to this country. And ironically, uh, right now you've got Republicans in states uh, who are advocating for higher taxes. I mean, so again, when you cross that Rubicon and you have to feed the beast, it's hard to dismantle it at the same time. It is difficult, but it needs to happen. And I'm glad that President Trump is saying, for example, if there's going to be a new regulation, you've got to kill two old regulations. Heritage Foundation calculates that every day Congress does not fix uh, or get rid of Obamacare. Uh, reform our tax code and get rid of Dodd-Frank cost three billion dollars. So if they take August off, that's about a 90 billion dollar hit to the U.S. economy if they don't take care of those things. So right. Congress needs to focus on this and get rid of this nonsense, Let's and, get it nonsense and set us free. Let's keep that promise that you made to the American voter. Guys, thank you both very thank much. You. Just ahead, Sanctuary City.